Hey, it's Mike over at FisherAssOff.com and today's uh, how-to uh, lesson is how to catch a spotted sea trout. So, you know, we cover all these various species of fish and just, just how to do it. And this is going to be one of those educational ones, just focusing on a sea trout. Now, sea trouts are actually in the drum family, so it's kind of a misnomer there. But uh, so they have a lot of the same habits as uh, a redfish might. So if you've seen the redfish video, a lot of the same tactics are going to apply. But let's go ahead and look at this. All right. In my opinion, uh, you, you got to know what your quarry likes. So you got to know what a spotted sea trout likes in order to catch spotted sea trout. So what you're going to find is they love to be near oyster bars. So they're getting all the little fish and shrimp or whatever are trying to hide in the oyster bars. So if you find oyster bars with a nice flow and some bait around it, chances are there's going to be some spotted sea trout um, near that oyster bar. Same with river mouths. So if that river mouth is surrounded by grass flats, you're gonna, there's going to be trout there. Uh, the bigger trout don't like getting in too skinny of water unless they're a couple uh, whoosh, you know, tail swipes away from uh, getting to deeper water. They're smarter than the little guys. So get one of those big gator, gator trout. A lot of time they're going to be close to a, a drop off of some sort. All grass flats in Florida have sea trout. They're everywhere. So they're one of those that likes to snuggle down into the grass, uh, facing the current, waiting for some sort of uh, bait to come by. They can come up and ambush it because they're very camouflaged. They're spotted back is an excellent camouflage for them for ambushing, uh, you know, ambushing their prey. Uh, they also hang out at docks just like a snook might. So you cast up to a dock uh, for a snook and you might end up catching yourself a trout. Uh, cast up there looking for a flounder, what do you know, you caught a, <laughs> you caught a, you caught a trout. So they're, they're basically, if, if you find reds, redfish, you're going to find trout probably there too. Uh, so there's a lot of these fish, these predators that are, are basically lurking in the same areas waiting for some sort of prey item to come by. Uh, I find that when you find a nice grass flat, um, you just look for a sand patch. So if you got a sandy patch, so it's a broken bottom, so grass flat, then sandy patch, grass flat, sandy if you, th you throw your bait somewhere within that sandy patch, there's probably a, um, a trout waiting in the grass to pounce on something that comes in there. So another good spot when you're searching out a bottom. Uh, most of the trout that I catch are in five feet of water or less. Uh, I know when it gets cold, they'll get deep in the deeper water and things like that. But for me, I'm usually fishing on the flats and, you know, five, six feet tops, you know, for, for these guys. Usually it's more like three or four feet of water that I'm catching uh, most of my trout in. Now the various rigs that you want to use, you know, if you're if you're live baiting them, they love a uh, finger mullet. They love them. Um, you can th they'll eat a pinfish under a bobber, uh, free lined uh, finger mullet. Um, you know wh whatever it is, and however you want to hook the mullet too. If the water's a little deeper, you hook it in the nose here, you know, and it'll 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 go up and down on the water column. If you want it to stay on top, you're going to hook it in the back there or the right there because then it kind of weights the fish down and its nose is pointing up so it's going to stay on top of the water. So if it's really skinny water, really, really shallow water, you probably want to hook it in the back here. If it's deeper water, you want to give it a nose hook. Um, and this is another one of those where when people are casting the docks, they'll just uh, use a jig head so they don't have to add an extra weight and get it to cast further. So jig head with a... Uh, mullet cast under a dock or something like that will work just fine. They love shrimp, so I would say 95% of the ones that I catch, I catch on shrimp. So it's either shrimp under a bobber, you know, some sort of, uh, you know, float of some sort. And, um, you know, you can tail hook it or you can hook it right underneath the uh, horn there. If, uh, you know, if you're fishing with a float, but if you're not fishing with a float and you have some sort of weight on it, usually like it back here. Again, you can use a jig head too. Uh, same difference. A dead bait. I, I tell you, the bigger sea trout will hit dead bait. Um, 
you know, I think one of the biggest ones I ever caught is probably 26 inches or 7 inches or something like that. Uh, caught on a cut piece of mullet just, just sitting up there by the mangroves um, where there was a drop-off. So it was a real deep spot, and then it was like a mud flat yeah, drop-off, and, you know, that's what they hit. Ladyfish, same deal. Anything stinky like that, because remember, a lot of these predators will scavenge if they can because, you know, to live out there in that hard marine environment it's all about calories in calories out so they don't want to spend too many calories chasing fish if they can just swim over and scoop one up that's already dead uh, as far as lures go you know i don't usually cover lures in these things because everyone has their own ideas about what to use um, as far as lures that I, that i use to catch the most it's usually some sort of scented bait some shrimp scented bait just jigging you know, so it goes up and down the water column. And for whatever reason, trout seem to hit it on the way down. I don't know why. Uh, they like gold spoons. But the bottom line is match the hatch, you know. So if if there's a bunch of finger mullet this big swimming around, um, you know, and you think there's trout there underneath them, well, you want to throw a lure that's roughly this big, too, that mimics the, the finger mullet. So whatever it is they're feeding on, you know, just remember, match the hatch. Uh, when you're when you're fishing for these um, spotted sea trout or any or any predator actually, you know you, you really want to you know they get really locked in to whatever they're feeding on, and a lot of times they won't bother with something that's not what they're feeding on. So if it's one of those days when they're real finicky, match the hatch. Make sure you do it. You can find most of this information that I just said on our website. It's www.fishyourassoff.com. And um, we have a how-to section that teaches you how to do it, um, you know, how to target the certain fish, what baits to use, what lures to use. There's a where-to section uh, and a what-to section, you know, what, what fish to target, which ones are good to eat, all those things. So, so that website is really informational. You, you can find out a lot about, um, you know, how to fish better. You know, you might learn something even if you've been fishing for years and years and years. So go ahead and check it out. Again, it's www.fishyourassoff.com. Uh, until next time, uh, I guess we'll see ya. You know, hope you catch some more fish. All right, bye bye.